What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be discussing the top five data analyst interview mistakes. Now, this may be the only topic where I genuinely feel overqualified to talk about. Uh, I have made so many mistakes. I mean, genuinely countless interview mistakes over the course of my career. And so I am bringing a lot of personal experience into this one. I hope that you find it helpful. I hope that you can learn from my mistakes so that you do not make those same mistakes in your interviews. With that being said, let's jump into number one, which is not having stories and examples ready to go. You are most likely going to be asked to describe a time when you were a leader, when you worked on a team, when you overcame a problem, when you made a mistake, and it's really good to have a story or an example to really make yourself shine in those moments. I have been asked that question in an interview and I've honestly just been, ooh, uh, let me think about that for a second. I can't really remember, um, give me a second. And it is terrible. I honestly just bombed it and it took me two or three minutes to really think of anything and that is not what you want to happen. If anything, you wanna be able to say, man, I just have so many examples of me being a leader. I, I don't know which one to choose. Obviously you wouldn't say that, but you get the point. You wanna have stories and examples ready to go for when you do get asked those questions. Number two is not doing research on the company beforehand. This is definitely one where you can show a little bit of initiative and a little bit of passion for what that company does in your interview. If you can talk specifically about part of their business or a product that they sell that you have experience in or you're really passionate about, that can go a really long way. The absolute last thing you wanna do is to not know anything about that company going into the interview. If anything, it can just come off as a genuine disinterest in the position. Number three is not preparing for the technical questions. Even for entry-level jobs, there's a good chance that you're going to get some type of technical questions in an interview. Most likely, you're going to be asked SQL questions, but you may be asked Python questions as well, depending on the position. I highly recommend brushing up on these topics as well as practicing some interview questions so that when you are asked a technical interview question, you feel prepared for it. This was a mistake that I made a lot, and I don't know why I never picked up on it, but I kept getting asked technical interview questions, and I really just failed every single one of them. And so... I finally picked up after a while that I needed to know this and I need to study this. And so I finally found a few websites that I felt really helped me, LeetCode being one of them, but there are a few others and I will leave some of those links in the description if you wanna check those out. Number four is not asking questions during or after the interview. Asking questions shows that you are interested in the position and that you want to know more. And so typically these interviews are not really meant to just be a question and answer. They're meant to be a little bit more like a conversation. And so you should be asking questions throughout the interview and not only at the end, but also at the end is very important. And so throughout the interview, if the interviewer says something interesting or something that piques your interest, be sure to follow up with that and ask that question. Something else that's really important is asking questions at the very end. There are so many questions that you can ask at the end of an interview. So honestly, you should never have no questions at the end. I recommend writing four or five questions down before you actually get into the interview. And if they aren't answered during the course of the interview, those are ones that you can ask at the end. At the end of an interview, when they would ask me if I had any questions, I would almost always say, nope, I think we covered everything. Thank you so much for your time. And that was kind of what I said in every single one. And honestly, I'm just now realizing that that was a missed opportunity to connect with the interviewer. It was also a missed opportunity to talk more about the position, talk more about the company, and maybe highlight some of my experience and skills a little bit more to give me a better shot at the job. Number five is not telling the truth during your interview. Now, I know this one is not a popular one. There are a lot of people who have messaged me and commented on previous videos where I've talked about this, but I am a firm believer that lying in your interview is not gonna be very helpful. I genuinely think that for the most part, lying in an interview is going to backfire you in some way. Whether that's saying you have some experience or skills that you don't actually have, if they start asking follow-up questions to that, it can be kind of tough to come up with some realistic and believable answers that will convince them that you actually do have those things. And so I genuinely believe that telling the truth during an interview will only benefit you in the long run. I'm gonna give you one bonus one, even if you don't want it, and that one is not dressing professionally. I know you're looking at me and you probably think, Alex, you probably have never dressed up in your life. I do try to look very professional at my work. And I think it sets a really good precedent when you show up and you're wearing a suit and a tie or a nice dress and you look really good for that interview. You may be working with a recruiter and they say, oh, this company is very relaxed. They just wear jeans and a t-shirt. So you can just wear that. It's totally fine. I would still recommend dressing professionally. I think it just shows a level of respect and professionalism and that sets a really good pace for the interview. 
With that being said, that is my top five data analyst interview mistakes. I hope it was helpful. I hope you can learn from my personal experiences. I have had so many terrible experiences. And so I do not want you to have those experiences. I want your interviews to go fantastic, amazing, and you to get that job immediately. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate you and I will see you in the next video.